Hello folks, Giovanni here. Today we're going to take a look at Puppeteer. We're going to give a quick overview, a high level explanation of what Puppeteer is and what it does, what we can do with it. Uh, we're going to try out a Puppeteer script from our local machine and also we're going to try one out uh, from Checkly. So first things first, let's start from the official documentation. I'm going to be reading the definition out loud here. Puppeteer is a node library which provides a high-level API to control Chrome or Chromium over the DevTools protocol. Puppeteer by default runs headless. So we're looking at a headless browser automation tool. And I would say Puppeteer is part of a newer generation of browser automation tools. And it has some very interesting characteristics that we're going to dive into in just a minute. Before that, uh, of course, you know, this, this whole thing begs the question, what can we do with Puppeteer? So Puppeteer accesses the browser through the DevTools protocol, which is of course quite established and uh, very powerful. So it actually gives us a lot of control over the browser. What that means is that we can use Puppeteer for a variety of things. We can use it to scrape web pages. We can use it for end-to-end -end testing. We can use it for monitoring. We can use it for for synthetic monitoring, that is. We can use it for gathering performance metrics about the page. So there, there's a whole lot that we can do there. And then there's even a few more scenarios that I haven't mentioned. And what I personally find very interesting about Puppeteer is the fact that it is headless. Um, it is uh, very close to the browser, as we said. So it is uh, definitely a quick uh, tool. As you will see in just a few minutes, uh, our scripts will execute extremely fast. And another important thing is, uh, well, to install Puppeteer to get started is extremely easy, uh, provided you have a node environment already installed on in your machine, uh, just running an NPM install Puppeteer will uh, get everything that you need to actually execute your scripts. And uh, that includes the browser. So this is an important consideration. A specific version of Puppeteer will come bundled with a specific version of Chromium. Uh, what that does for us is, apart from making installation uh, easier, this brings the additional benefit of increasing reliability. So we are kind of excluding all those um, potential version-based inconsistencies and incompatibilities uh, that may arise and maybe create false positives later on, which have historically been a pretty big issue for uh, automation tools, especially uh, in, in, in testing. So. That being said, um, let's just take a look at how we can actually run a Puppeteer script. So first of all, I'm going to introduce the uh, website that we're going to test and the flow that we're going to test. This is our test website, Danube. And uh, what I want to do is just perform a standard login procedure. So I'm just going to click on the login button up there, enter some credentials, hit sign in, and then I'm going to assert against an element on the page here, just to make sure that we actually are fully logged in. And my script looks like this. So uh, it is a simple, uh, not too long script and does pretty much what I just said. I'm just gonna execute that right now. I'm just gonna type node login.js. And we're done already. We ran in headless mode, so we didn't see much at all happening. There was no GUI. Let's take a quicker look and you see in headless mode, this lasted uh, or executed in under two seconds, I would say. So we are executing quite quickly. Now I'm gonna add a couple of options here. So I want to turn headful mode on and I also want to slow things down a little bit because I want to see what's going on. So let me just run this again. We see the browser starting up, we're navigating to the page and we're uh, performing now at human speed, let's say, the action of logging in. So. That's quite easy to uh, execute a script and then debug it by using headful mode as well. Now, the fact that we were able to execute something that quickly, remember, we were able to run an end-to-end -end test with a runtime of two, three seconds maybe. So when end-to-end -end tests become that quick, and as I said, that much more reliable, uh, we actually can Think about scheduling those and just having them run continuously for monitoring our services. So basically doing synthetic monitoring based on Puppeteer. So here I'm doing just that. Um, I'm looking at the uh, Checkly dashboard here and I'm monitoring my, my test website here. And I do have basically checks that are running 
and in this case, every few hours, but I could have them run every few minutes. And uh, one of them is called end-to-end -end checkout. This is uh, going to the website that you've seen before and actually executing a way longer script. This is a still a puppeteer script uh, with no, no added magic really. And we'll now try to run a way longer script, just a one-off here from the AWS location in London. And uh, as you see, this also just takes a few seconds. And here we're doing something, of course, that will slow things down a little bit, which is we're taking a lot of screenshots. Uh, still Puppeteer executes super fast. So you can see even a complex flow where we're filling in a ton of different, of different fields, we're navigating to different pages and stuff like that. Even that flow is executing under five seconds in this case. So of course, when we can reliably get such quick execution, uh, we can just schedule this. Let's say we want to have this same script run maybe every 10 minutes or more or less. And uh, we can basically continuously ensure that the state of our service of the specific key transaction that is the checkout is working just fine. So this is where um, you know maybe end-to-end -end testing and synthetic monitoring uh, kind of come together. And uh, I'm sure that as these frameworks, as these uh, automation tools evolve, we're going to see some very interesting things there. So before we, uh, before we say goodbye, I just wanted to also bring up an interesting point about Puppeteer that uh, comes up quite a bit. You know, a, a lot of people mention Puppeteer and ask, okay, it's, it's, it's fast, it's reliable. What about cross-browser testing? Here, I only see Chrome and Chromium. Well, Puppeteer is not a cross-browser testing tool. It is definitely focused on Chrome. At the same time, a very interesting development happened recently, which is, uh, you may have heard of this other tool called Playwright. And Playwright is basically puppeteer, but cross-browser. Uh, supports uh, Chromium, Firefox, and Safari. And well, Playwright is also basically built by the same team that was building Puppeteer at Google. And now they're building Playwright at uh, Microsoft. So I think this is a very interesting development because the, the team, which is very active, it's basically building a second tool with all the learnings from the first one, right? So Playwright is definitely very close to Puppeteer, but does tweak uh, some very important things and might be also an automation tool that you want to keep an eye on for the future. Cool thing is Checkly, uh, which we've just seen, is also going to support Playwright very soon. So you will be able to just paste in here a Playwright script and uh, just execute that. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that you will give Puppeteer and Playwright and Checkly a try and I'm looking forward to hear about your experiences.